can hear me, eh? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, listen, a uh, couple of things. One of the things that struck me about this whole movement is that the public is not allowed in public spaces. <laughs> and isn't it time we liberated public spaces? Yeah. And, put them in, and allowed people to have political discussions in public spaces. Yeah. You know, and I was, at, I was at the London Occupy uh, on the steps of St. Paul's. And there were lots of open squares there, but none of them could be gone into without actually having the private people come and kick you out. So this is, this, is, this is what democracy, as you were saying, looks like. That we have to have open spaces where we can have open, absolute open discussions about what the hell to do about the immense concentrations of wealth and power, which are totally corrupting the political system, corrupt the judiciary, corrupt the media, corrupt everything, including corrupting university education, and, and are actually destroying people's lives. So it's time, it's time that there was a movement. And, and, and this is what is beginning. Now, as this begins, we've got to actually recognize a number of things. There have been several movements over the last few years that have risen and fallen and disappeared. We've got to keep at it. We've got to stay. And the good point about occupying was it was a way of staying. Well, if you can't occupy a space anymore, then you've got to find another way of staying. But we've got to stay together. And we've got to keep it growing. And we've got to go further and further and involve more and more people in the population in this movement because most people are on our side. This is the incredible thing. They see the injustice. They see how unreasonable the, the, all of these incredible concentrations of wealth and power are. And we've gone through this crisis and you would have thought they would have heard, but they haven't heard at all. They've got more wealthy, actually, through this crisis. There's a sort of saying, never let a good crisis go to waste. And these guys have not been wasting the crisis at all. They've been actually getting more and more money and making us pay more and more. We just had an increase in tuition at CUNY. Why? Well, because actually the debt of the state was so big that they, they, the state couldn't afford to fund CUNY anymore to the same degree it had been before. Why was the state debt big? Because the state wasn't getting money from the federal government because it didn't have the money. So why didn't the federal government have the money? Because they'd given it to the banks. Yeah, basically. Woo! Yeah. So here you go, here you go. Actually, student debt is a way of actually funding the banks. And you say, this is just not, this is just not reasonable. Yeah. But this is going on all over the place. It's not only going on here, it's going on elsewhere. And I, you know, about a month ago, I had the privilege of being down in Chile. There's a fantastic movement in Chile. They've occupied the public universities for the last five months. Five months! And you know, and then they, they and along came the government and said, well, we'll give you a little bit more money. They said, no, no, we want free education. And we want a good education. And it's a human right, and we're going to ro roll back all this stuff that was imposed by Pinochet and all the rest of it. We've got to roll back all that stuff that was started by Reagan. We've got 30 years of horror to roll back. And it's 30 years of class privilege for the very, very affluent. It's 30 years of discrimination for everybody else. And I think that this is a time now we've got to turn this whole thing around and turn it and move it in the other direction. And you guys are doing it. And the people who went to jail, that, man, that's courage. That's courage. And it takes persistence. So let's give a shout to them. I think this is a, an, a, an, amazing, an amazing thing. And, and, of course, one of the things that's immediately evident is, you know, we have these small meetings. You remember when the Tea Party started? They'd have a meeting like this. They'd be on the front, they'd be the front item on Fox News. And you wouldn't see any police around. The police are, oh, this is fine, this is fine, it's great. And they could walk around with guns and nobody did anything. And we come here and all we do, and just because we're simply in a public space, exercising our constitutional rights of free assembly and free association, and we say, we are against the concentration of wealth and power, what happens? Thousands of police suddenly descend on us and say, oh, you, uh, you know. <laughs> and then they, then they do all kinds of other things too. They kind of just start to say, well, actually, actually you, you, you smell a bit and, 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 and you need to be cleaned up or something like that. I mean, you know, this, this, this sort of kind, of kind of excuses. So what's clear, what's clear is that the message that is coming out from this movement is dangerous and it's dangerous to political power. And the danger has to be escalated, and it has to be made consistent.
And the other thing, the other things you got to think about is, you know, one of the things they'll try and do is divide you. Divide you into factions and kind of say this and that. Well, okay, in any movement you need some divisions of labor and some people need to take care of, the, of, 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 of this and some people take, need, take care of that. You, know, you have a librarian and then you have a medical, you know, those kinds of things. But the kind of divisions they want is to turn one group against another. And we've got to, we've got to stay solid and solidarious. We've got to stay together. Do not be divided. Do not be divided. The other thing they'll do is they'll try and divert you. You know, they'll kind of say, oh, well, you're interested in them. No, well, actually, the real issue is something else, and they try and get you involved in something else. Don't be diverted. Don't be diverted from the simple message. I mean, we, we can sometimes overcomplicate things, but it's a simple message we got. Away with these chronic inequalities of wealth and power. We've got to actually deal with that, and this, the bourgeoisie, that's it. That's it. Simple as that. And, and at all levels. And at all levels. So I'm, I'm very excited to be here. This is a terrific uh, thing to see. Uh, and it's going on all over the country. And I think that actually this movement uh, can really make a big difference. You've already, I think, changed the nature of the conversation in this country. And that is your doing. That is your doing. And you've made people buy your persistence. And I think, you know, when you had the snowstorm in New York City and people still stayed, people said, my God, these people must be serious. <laughs> this is not, you know, I mean, you know, we used to like to think the revolution was the festival of the people. Well, it's not all festival. Some of it is and some of it's not. And, and that was real hard. That was a real hard slog. And I think that actually by being persistent and by staying, and by actually then actually articulating what it is we're about in very simple terms, you can really change this country around. I mean, most people in this country do believe in equality. I mean, there was a, this poll came out that kind of said, you know, people in this country, when you poll them, they say, well, it's okay for the top 20% of the population to control 30% of the wealth. It is not okay for 1% of the population to control 80% of the wealth. That is absolutely not okay. And we've got to get it back to levels of equality where we have reasonable equality for everybody. Open access to education, open access to health care, open access to affordable housing. All of those questions need to be right on the agenda right now and, do, and put there big time by a social movement that is going to actually be unstoppable. And together we can make it as unstoppable as as anything and and it's great to see and you've got to remember the, the, the Chilean students they've been at it for five months and they're going to sit there for another five months until they get what they want and I think that this is a this is great and that well, we, this is what we've got to do okay thanks and Thank tremendous you. You. and the struggle continues right the struggle continues and continues and continues Another world is possible. We are unstoppable. Another world is possible. We are unstoppable. Another world is possible.